wanted to be young, gifted, and black again. Uh, Olivia the Ostrich? Yes, Tortilla. You were never black. Oh, do you think my feathers were always this grey? <laughs> well, I pulled out this fabulous brand new book that I thought would be perfect for Black History Month or just basically any time you want to feel inspired to achieve greatness. These are chock full of 52 black heroes from past and present from America, from the world, frankly. So I can't read about all 52 of them. I will run out of air, but I've selected a few that I think you will really enjoy. And we're starting with a movie director from Hollywood, Ava DuVernay. She's from Long Beach, California. That's right. We're talking about modern day heroes. Ava DuVernay was the first black female film, film director to win a Golden Globe Award and the first African American to win Best Director at the 2012 Sundance Film Festival. See, these folks are already proving that even if no one like you has done something in particular before, what's stopping you? Nothing. Now, as a child, Ava grew up near Compton. That's a mostly black and Latino city in southern Los Angeles County. And that could be a rough place to grow up, depending on your particular neighborhood. Now, throughout the school year, she attended an all-girls Catholic school and discovered her love of movies while watching films with her aunt, Denise. See, everybody always has somebody important in their life that inspires them. Ava often visited her father's childhood home in Haynesville, Alabama during her summer vacations. And later, she said that those trips to her dad's hometown inspired her Oscar-nominated film Selma about marches for voter equality in the 1960s. See, is your summer vacation inspiring some greatness in you for your future? Who knows? As a publicist turned filmmaker, Ava attributes her success to creativity and determination, and she advises aspiring directors to be passionate and move forward with gusto every single hour of every single day until you reach your goal. That is excellent advice. So who's next, you're wondering? Who did I select to read? Ta-da! From the political world. The first African-American president, Barack Obama, and first black first lady, Michelle Obama. Barack Hussein Obama served as the 44th president of the United States of America, the nation's first African-American president. He was born to a Kenyan economist and an American anthropologist in Honolulu, Hawaii. Ah, how lovely to grow up in Hawaii. But he did spend his childhood going to many places, actually. He went to school. He played basketball in Hawaii and Indonesia. His experiences growing up in Catholic and Muslim schools expanded his worldview. And he said, I benefited from a multiplicity of cultures that all fed me. Barack studied at Occidental College, Columbia University, and after graduating, worked as a community organizer in Chicago before going to Harvard Law. After that, he worked as a civil rights lawyer, a teacher, wrote a book called Dreams of My Father, and later on, his commitment to public service and grassroots organizing secured his two election victories as El Presidente. And who's that lovely lady next to him? Why, it's Michelle Obama, who was the 44th, 44th First Lady of the United States, FLOTUS. She pioneered as a first African-American floatist, and she was also a lawyer. She also was raised in Chicago's South Side. She was born Michelle LaVon Robinson. She lived in a tiny bungalow with her parents and her older brother, and was part of a family who valued reading and education. Oh, exactly what we're all doing right here, right now. Her academic excellence, because she was encouraged to do it from school and from home, brought her to Chicago's first magnet school for gifted kids, where she graduated as salutatorian. That's number two in the class. Valedictorian is the first. She went on to study at Princeton University and Harvard Law as well. And she said, for me, Education was power. She worked as a lawyer, she worked in the city, she worked in community outreach, and as a first lady, she became a public, a public speaker, a fashion icon, an advocate for military families, health, and wellness courses. They've been married since 1992 and they have two lovely girls. Number three, I have selected an artist. Ah, yes, an artist. Now this fella, 
Maybe you haven't heard about him, and I really wanted you to know about him. Jean-Michel Basquiat. He was from Brooklyn, New York. He was an American painter and a street artist and expressive painter who collaborated with pop artist Andy Warhol. Now, Andy Warhol, maybe you've seen his art. He made famous paintings like of soup cans. I know it sounds crazy, but you've got to see it. The son of a Puerto Rican mother and a Haitian father, Jean-Michel Basquiat joined the Brooklyn Museum as a junior member at six, six years old. He was fluent in French, English, and Spanish by age 11. So see, kid? Just because you're a kid doesn't have to stop you from doing anything and learning anything and becoming anything you want. Jean-Michel dreamed of becoming a cartoonist. After surviving a car accident, his mom gave him a book of a, a copy of the book Gray's Anatomy. Now that's a medical book that shows about how the human body is put together. He, he became fascinated with the structure of the human body and used it to, for his art. He made poetry, music, and street art in high school practicing by doing. I started a picture and I finished it. After his graffiti became famous, he caught the attention of the art world. His paintings became famous when he was just in his 20s. His imaginative mix, they call, of high art with uh, hip hop and black history and references to jazz made him a celebrity. Well, when he died, he left behind over a thousand unseen paintings. That is how prolific he was. Prolific means he drew a lot. So he became, he left a huge body of work and you could find it in museums. Next up, I've prepared an athlete that you've probably heard of. Simone Biles, earning more Olympic and World Championship medals than any other American gymnast. Simone Biles led the U.S. Olympic women's gym team, gymnastics team, to victory in 2016. Simone Biles was flying high long before she defied gravity as the most decorated female gymnast in America. She competed with her four bro- with her brothers on the trampoline. I take it back, it wasn't four brothers, just her brothers climbing a four-foot mailbox because she was so teeny tiny. And she taught herself how to do back tucks. And well, she had to be very adventurous early on to do that stuff. She was raised in Texas, but listen to this. She and her siblings were placed in foster care because their birth mother couldn't take care of them. So her grandparents adopted her and her younger sister, providing them with a safe and supportive home. So she tough breaks at the beginning, but she found love and a stable home that nurtured her. After six-year-old Simone's natural talent caught the attention of a local gym coach, she started to train. Well, she started following Olympian regimens to sharpen her skills and turned that into Olympic gold. Well, she had to miss high school football games and dances. That's the sacrifice you make to be the best at some of these things. Now, despite this, her unmatched tumbling, flipping, and floor exercise skills paid off. She became the first woman gymnast since 1974 to win four consecutive all-around titles at the U.S. National Gymnastics Championship and the first female ever to be the all-around world champ three years in a row. Of her experience, she said, making history is cool. How about that? I think making history is pretty cool too. Now, next up, you know you know what? I'm going to skip because that one is so cool. I'm gonna save it for last. So where shall we go now? We're gonna go outer space. Mae Jemison. She was an astronaut and the first African-American woman to travel in space. Mae set her sights on the stars early. She was a curious kid raised by a carpenter and a teacher in Alabama and Chicago. Well, when she wasn't hard at work studying, she was dancing, acting in plays, and reading about, what else? Science. May was fascinated by astronomy and the workings of the human body. Her childhood interest in science and medicine led her to study biochemical engineering at Stanford University. You've got to be really smart to get in there. And later, she became a doctor for the Peace Corps in Sierra Leone and Liberia. May said, I always knew I'd go to space, and she followed that lifelong dream. She applied for NASA's astronaut training program and became the first African-American woman in their space program in 1987. And in 1992, she went into space. How about that? 
Who's next? Are we wondering? Let's see. Who do I? Oh, a prima ballerina who's in the news all the time and on stages. And maybe you can see her perform one day. Misty Copeland. She was the first African American ballerina appointed principal dancer for the American Ballet Theater. ABT is one of the top ballet companies in the United States. She has always lived in motion. After sleeping on the floors of motels with her five siblings and regularly going hungry as a kid, Misty moved to California. Despite a very tough upbringing, participating in dance classes at her new school became a source of peace, she said. She said, finding ballet was like finding a missing piece of myself. That's what it's like when you find what you're supposed to do with your life. Well, while she was studying ballet, she was inspired by other people too, because we find inspiration everywhere. She was inspired by the gymnast from, from Romania, Nadia Comaneci, and she would dance to the music of Mariah Carey. Well, later on, all that hard work earned her a spot at the American Ballet Theater Company's Corps de Ballet. So she started off in the ballet and then rose to the ranks of being at the very top. In 2015, she became the principal dancer and the first African-American principal dancer in the company's history. She's danced in the Firebird and Nutcracker so beautifully that it got her attention worldwide for her unique flair. And she cemented her position, it says here, it's one of the few black performers at the highest levels of classical dance and Time Magazine named her one of the 100 most influential people for her pioneer, pioneering work and her outspokenness about diversity in the dance world. Finally, for my grand finale, a person, an icon, a figure who has a category of her own. Oprah! One of the most famous talk show hosts, not just in America, but the world. And owns a network, is an actress, is a producer, is a philanthropist. That's somebody who helps people and gives money for good causes. Oprah was actually born, check this out, I didn't know this, Orpah in Mississippi and her mom was a teenage single mom. So already she was fighting a disadvantage. Well, her name was so mispronounced, Orpa, that she actually changed it to Oprah. Well, her young mom wasn't ready to raise her, so her grandmother did and taught her to read before she was three. At six, she went to live with her mom, finally, but her mom had to work a lot and was away a lot, and her life at home was so hard that Oprah ran away. But still, she was gifted, and she stood out as a talented speaker at school, and that gift for Gab, earned her a full scholarship to Tennessee State University. And that was a big deal because, I mean, in her family, no one had gone that far. At age 19, she's still technically a teenager, she becomes Nashville's first black female news anchor, paving the way for her to begin the Oprah Winfrey show, which went on for 25 seasons, 25 years. Now, her words to people, are turning wounds into wisdom. That's what she says, to take the difficulties and turn them into a deep knowledge that you can use in your life and not just a pain you carry around. Her positive message inspired millions, including President Obama, who awarded her the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2013. And that is a most amazing honor that a civilian can get. So many more young, gifted, and black people in here to talk to you about these icons, people that are making headlines and still accomplishing things right now, as well as classical figures from history that you've already read about in school probably, or will soon, like George Washington Carver or Rosa Parks, artists like Josephine Baker and Louis Armstrong, supermodel like Naomi Campbell, uh, oh, and this, this performer, Esperanza Ball, uh, uh, Spalding, she is fabulous. And I know you know Beyonce. Everyone who's anyone is in here. So if you want to read more, you pick it up or go get it at the library. So I hope that you enjoyed this special Black History Month story or anytime you just feel inspired, 
Oh, to be young, gifted, and black again. Those were the good old days. Yes, yes, they were, Olivia. Oh, yes. Oh, now I'm just middle-aged, fabulous, and graying. Oh, well, we're all on our way there. Oh, I suppose. But not you, kid. You're so young and vital, and the whole world is your oyster. Go out and achieve your dreams. <laughs> Thank you, Olivia. And see you next time, kid, on... Do you want to take this one? Oh, sure. Kid time! Story time! <laughs>